Well, hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cowboys in the Kitchen. Um, getting things worked out. Hopefully, uh, every episode gets a little better. Um, we are now using the new sound system, so I've got a little microphone here. So if I walk over here and I'm doing something, you should be able to hear me just as well as if I were standing right up close. So I uh, started thinking about different recipes that I've done in the past, and I really thought it was time to do one that's simple. Uh, I don't know how many, what was that movie? Forrest Gump. You know, they, Forrest always said, you know, stupid is as stupid does. Well, you can say the same thing about other things like beauty. Beauty is as beauty does. And the same thing is simple. Simple is as simple does. And so this recipe is all about simplicity. There's water, flour, yeast, sugar, salt. Five things. Very easy to make. Uh, it is a story about anytime you bake bread, pretty much. Um, it's kind of a story about hurry up and wait. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead at this point and get started. So I'm going to get out of the cowboy hat, into the work hat, and I'll go set this over here. Also, I hope you like the uh, new kind of look. I decided to put the uh, tripod up on our jug of drink drinking water so you can get kind of a better feel and see for around the kitchen. Uh, by the way, this recipe is going to come out of, and yes, you see it backwards, but this is our bread's cookbook or my bread's cookbook. It's actually the first baking book that I ever got. Um, and this is from the California Culinary Academy, Easy and Elegant Meals, Breads. And uh, it's probably out of print as well. Uh, again, eBay and Amazon are your friends, but uh, there are some really, really cool recipes in here. So we're gonna start out with a quarter cup of warm water. And I ran this a little bit so that it would run, so I wouldn't have to go too long with it. And you only really want it about skin temp. That's about right. And you have to measure this because it's only a quarter cup. That's just perfect. So we're going to dump that in there. And I can set this up because all it ever had in it was water. And I'm going to go in here and get my yeast. Here's my yeast. And... I've got my tablespoon over here and this is a little bit different than other recipes that I've used. Um, they want you to put in the yeast and sprinkle it in, but they also want you to put in your uh, sugar at the same time. So I'm just going to sprinkle this in. There's only a quarter cup of water, so it's going to, it's still going to get a little bit sitting on top of it, which is okay. Hi, Boo. Boo Bear's walking on by. All right, so there we go. Got that in there. And I'll go ahead and get the lid on this. And so it's a tablespoon of yeast, and there's going to be one teaspoon of sugar that goes in here. Go ahead and pop that back in here. And teaspoon of sugar. And just going to go ahead and dip out of here. You don't want to overdo the sugar on this. And what this does is it's going to help that yeast activate and soften just a little quicker, which is kind of nice. Okay. And set that in. And I can actually put this one up because I didn't mess up that teaspoon too bad. Um, all right. Put the sugar up. And now we get to do something special like wait five minutes. Um, let's see. Kitchen timer five zero zero and we're going to click start and while you're, we're waiting i'll uh, show you a couple other changes i've made here um, i'm actually not going to knead the dough directly on the counter i'm going to try using uh, a little uh, pad that i got and pardon me while we move and i have actually set this up hopefully you'll be able to see directly like when we're kneading dough right down here so pick this back up and set it up here we're waiting oh sorry about the blur 
there we go so much better um, but over the years I've actually made a few different recipes uh, out of here my first sourdough recipe was out of this book right there but the nice part about this is now this is for the guys I'm telling the guys this okay if you would like to totally impress your significant other for Valentine's Day make the recipe that we're gonna make tonight it doesn't take a lot of stuff you don't I mean it helps to have the nice uh, high-tech and jet engine KitchenAid you can fly a plane with that thing but you don't need that any mixer with the dough hook and get you by but see what you do is you can actually take it and make it with a heart and if you tell your significant other I made this points ahead points ahead for you I'm looking in there you can see it's already kind of softening up a little bit there's still a little bit of stuff sitting on top so I'm going to kind of stir that up just a little not a lot because I don't want to get a bunch of that yeast sitting out on that spoon don't want a whole lot of that on the spoon at all want it staying in there where it's going to do its job uh, about halfway there um i'm going to need a half cup measuring cup when we're done with this because we have the flour see if anyone's joined us yet no guess not so anyway um i've uh, actually been um looking at some various things over the last week or so and, and kind of lamenting a little bit that i used to have this ministry where i could do worship music in church and play the guitar and that's gone can't do that anymore um this hand not so much the rest of the fingers but this finger especially is uh, pretty much wrecked at the end of it the the last knuckle out um, it's just really it's always stiff um, but um, you know that ministry went away and and so I'm kind of seeing this as my kind of ministry right now who do we get joining it's Julie hi Julie um, I really see this as my part of my ministry right now because um, you know they say you know give a man a fish you feed him for a day teach a man to fish you feed him for life well I'm teaching people how to not so much fish uh, but how to fix the fish so they don't poison themselves when they eat it right um, but um, no it's, it's like if I teach you how to bake something and then you go and you bake something and then you go give some of that away see I'm not just teaching you how to make it I'm teaching you how to share it she says hey sweetie so we're just about got about a minute left and yes it's gonna get loud in here you remember my French bread that's what we're making tonight my original French bread that I used to bake especially around the holidays I think she's probably had some of my uh, uh, French rolls one time or another and we're uh, getting down there so I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring I'll get a half cup going here and I think I can probably pour in my I think it's what two teaspoons yeah two teaspoons of salt I can put the put that in here now I'm gonna rush it a little bit is fine there we go there's one and there's two absolutely perfect put the salt back up there's my beeper going off Okay, so this recipe calls for five and a half to six cups of unbleached flour. I really don't care if it's unbleached or not. I'm not that big of a, you know, tyrant about such things. Um, but um, you have to add in that and you have to put in another one and three quarters cups of water. Because if you don't, you won't have enough for paste, let alone bread. Okay, so there's eh, a little bit out of that.
Perfect. One and three quarters cups of water. So it's a total of two cups of water, but we already put in a cup and a, or we already put in a quarter cup. And we got our salt and we got our sugar, teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt. So this is all ready to go. It's ready for flour. So I'm going to crank this all the way up. And yes, it's going to get a little loud. And we're going to do eight of these. So we're going to do four cups of flour. I could actually make two batches in this. I'm not going to do that because um, it gets a little messy. Also, I don't need four loaves of bread. So get this puppy whipping. One. Two. Three, four, do the other side here, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now just like the other times that we made bread, we're gonna let this just run. We're gonna let it run because we want that to not only mix together, you actually want that to become kind of elastic. You want it to stick to the sides of the bowl. Get my trusty little spatula here and very carefully. See, one of these days I'm gonna be doing this and I'm gonna mess up on Facebook Live and then you guys can laugh. There we go. Let that run. And it's already mixing up really nice. It's kind of doughy right now. If I was making kind of a pastry, I might let it stop. But we're not done adding flour in yet. I'm gonna let that run till it gets all sticky on the sides of the bowl. And in fact, I'm gonna put this on for about three minutes. And hit start on that. Yeah, it's already sticking. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and take my little flour scoop here. I'm gonna go one and not quite a whole one, probably one and a half. So I got about three quarters of a cup of flour out here on the, on the board. And I'm gonna roll up my sleeves because the wool shirt and it will just eat up that flour. Hey, there we go. It's starting to stick really good now. So I got about one more cup of flour that's going in that. Remember how we did this last time, we're gonna turn this all the way down to just before it's off. And once we put this in, we're gonna just put it in a little bit at a time. We're gonna do it really slow. And then we're gonna let that bread hook, that dough hook, that's gonna do the work. Because ordinarily I would have to uh, knead this for about 15 minutes. My hands can't take it, my wrist can't really take it. So I'm gonna let that dough hook do most of the work. And I'll still do some kneading because it's just kind of fun to play with dough. Um, but uh, won't have to do nearly as much. I can take this out because all these ever had in them was water. And it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. I'm going to turn this down. So that's as slow as this will go. And it just looks like it's hardly stirring at all, but it is, really. And we're going to just tap in a little bit of flour here, a little bit of flour there, a little on that side. And I'm going to get one of these prepared, but I'm not going to put it in yet. I can take this and set it over there because we're pretty much done with it. There we go. 
She's starting to mix together really well. See, now this is where I need a second camera in the studio. Because I could show you right in here. I will here in a minute when I get this other one put in. Because it's starting to go up. Okay. So I actually have the power cord hooked up in here and that would be bad if I drag that across the kitchen. So I'm going to unplug that. There. And you can see that's actually starting to form up really nice. In about another five, maybe seven minutes that is actually going to come straight away from those sides and it'll pull up and be just fine and i'll take this and plug it back in Oop. there we go hang on sliding back there we go Oh, that's awesome. So that is just about ready. See, it didn't even take as long as I thought. But we're still going to let it just go in there and keep doing its thing. That way, the dough hook does the work. More work on the hook, less work on my wrist. What I usually do, bake, turn it as low as it'll go, which is 170. I'm not going to put the dough in there, but this is just going to get a little warm and it's going to help this thing when it rises. And it's starting to stick again, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because the last thing I want to do is have to um peel that away from the bowl which i'm gonna have to a little bit anyway but that's okay i don't mind doing that actually tell you what i'm gonna put this back up i still owe myself a quarter a cup of flour so i'm just gonna wing it here and this way it won't stick to the sides as much There we go. A little bit better. And we'll take this and drop it down. It's still going to be a little bit gooey. Remember, if you wear a wedding ring or an engagement ring or any kind of ring, and you don't want to have to sit there for a couple hours scrubbing that ring before you go make bread, take off that ring. There. Get this out of there. Pop that out. Go one, two, three. Got it out. There we go. So I'm going to take this. I'm just going to scoop it out onto my little board. This is about as good as you can get without before you have to go in with your hands and that's all right that is all good i got very little waste left and you're gonna turn the hot water on this and you put a little bit of soap in there and you're gonna let that fill up while you're kneading the bread so now i can take the clean hand okay the relatively clean hand and there we go well you guys can see this you just take this little flour on top you can see this is still pretty soft and you take this and you just flip it over and over and over and 
You can keep working in more flour as you do it. Get some really good action with the knuckles going. And as warm as this is, even though it hurts a little bit with my one bad finger, it actually feels good because I'm putting warmth on that. All right, get this. And toss in a little bit more flour. There we go. Get that going in there. And that's getting ready to overflow, which I don't want. You can see this is still fairly elastic. It's not a really stiff dough. You don't want it stiff and hard and and icky to work with because that'll make your bread really crusty. You do want it to have like the little elastic bubbles. Kind of should bubble a little bit. When you get to, towards the top here, do it like that. You take a little bit more. And I can do one more round with this and it won't hurt. Won't hurt it, won't hurt me. I've actually taken this stuff before and just pounded it. Um, really good anger management therapy, I'll tell you. I've had my kids come running up the stairs going, what's the matter, what's the matter, what's the matter? I'm just making bread. There you go. A little bit more. I'm kind of sort of running out of flour, which is actually the goal. You want to get all this in, it, in there. Now the oven's as warm as I want it, which is good. And you can see and you're looking at that, that it's, it's just right. It's just perfect. And that's what we want. And so, <clears throat> while we're doing that, that's sitting for a minute because I have to put it back in that bowl. Let's see. Kind of get that back up here. Okay. So I have to clean this bowl. Unless you want to buy a sponge, every time you do this, start off with your hands. Because otherwise you're going to fill this full of icky dough. Every time. So, your hands already have dough on them if you've done, been doing this right. So, a little hot water won't hurt. A little soap won't hurt. That's what mom always used to say, right? Okay. Now, there's just not, not nearly as much dough as was on there before. And now I don't mind putting a little bit of action with the sponge on there. Because you do want all the dough out. So. And no, I'm not cleaning this out because I'm a neat freak. Anyone who's seen my den would know I'm not a neat freak. But because we need this to uh, have that bread rise. Okay, and wipe this out. Oi. See, it's nice and clean. Okay, there we go. Now, get my hands all cleaned up. Hey, for the most part, I got the dough off of there. I can get the suds off too. Probably a good idea. All right. Now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to get my wonderful magical Crisco. And I'm going to get a single paper towel. Okay, I'm going to get two. And I'm going to scoop some of that onto my paper towel and I want a little bit of a glob at the bottom not too thick right but I also want to be able to spread this out so it covers the whole bowl 
And last time when I was making sourdough French bread, we didn't get to show this part because my darling wife was coming home and I needed to help her unload the car. But now we're showing this part. That's all good. Okay, um, gonna take that paper towel and throw it out. And now I'm gonna take this, this is top side, okay? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in upside down. I'm gonna turn it. And what it's doing is it's collecting some of that Crisco on there. And I'm gonna turn this and then I'm gonna turn it so the bottom's all covered as well. And now that's all in there. And my hand's a little greasy. And that's okay. I'm gonna take that, put it up, and get a paper towel to wipe my hands because I don't like greasy hands. I'm gonna get my wonderful, magical press and seal. Great stuff. They should give me a kickback or send me a truckload of press and seal. I'm gonna tear off one sheet there. I'm gonna cover this up and that's gonna heat, keep whatever heat gets in there, it's gonna stay in there and that's what we want. Especially when it's as cold and icky as it is outside. We got nine inches of snow coming this weekend. If I get bored, we may be doing another show. You never know. All right, so I've got that sitting there. I'm gonna put the towel over it because it says you gotta cover it with the towel, but I cover it with press and seal anyway. So now I got press and seal and the towel. And we're gonna take this and let it set for, 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 how long? Oh, come on, it's in here. Um, I think it's an hour. I wanna make sure it's an hour. Yep, an hour. So I'm gonna take this and go kitchen timer, five, nine, five, nine. And I'm gonna hit start. Nope, kitchen timer. There we go. And it's counting down an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and let you guys go back to doing stuff for a little bit. And in about an hour, I'm going to show you how I fashion these out because the one I'm making is, I'll show you, it is these. We're going to do a couple of those that we'll be able to make two of those sunflowers. And uh, nice part about it is like I say, one to keep and one to give away. The one that I keep, since Carla doesn't need a lot of bread anymore, I can take those rolls and I can put them in the freezer and I can take out one or two and thaw those out and leave the rest in the freezer. And that way I don't waste my bread. Anyway, you guys take care. God bless. We'll see you in about an hour. Hey everybody, welcome back. So the timer just went off. I haven't looked in here yet, but Hey, guess what? It rose. Go figure. All right. So we're going to make rolls. And I have to take the ring off again for a little bit. But before we get started making rolls, I have to grease the pans. So I'm going to grab my trusty paper towel. I'm going to grease up the pan. That's pretty fair. Don't want it too thick on there, but you don't want it too thin either. And now I need some of my wonderful little cornmeal. I'm gonna do this over the sink so I don't get cornmeal everywhere. We just want a nice little thin coat of cornmeal on there. I'm gonna tap this when I'm done, take off any excess. So if I get a little bit lumped in there, that's fine. And take that. That's about what you about what you need. See right about there. And take that. I need to do one more because this is going to be two quote unquote loaves. And each of those loaves, so to speak, is too big that I can, for me to be able to fit both of them on a single cookie sheet. So, fun part is fitting it all in the oven. I'm gonna put my cornmeal on here. And, all right. 
I'm going to tap it going that way because I had a naked spot there. And now that's covered up. Okay, I can now put up the cornmeal. Toss away the paper towel. Put the cap on the Crisco. And wipe my hands on the towel. Don't worry, I'll use another one when we're going here. And just so you guys see what this looks like. See, it's about twice the size as it was before. We're going to punch it down. And pull it out of there after we punch it down. And that actually takes it back to almost the original size. And it says turn it over, turn the bowl over, cover it, and you got to cover it for about 10 minutes. And so I put kitchen timer 10 minutes and start. So we're going to have that. Um, let's see. I can throw away the press and seal. I'm going to put this up. Okay. And for the most part, yeah, okay, I'll get that cleaned up. Might as well, right? And toss the towel down there. Got to love glass top stoves. The one thing you have to remember about glass top stoves, if you use one of those air bake cookie pans, do not set it on the top if the burner's on. Because it'll mount right through the bottom. go fairly clean doesn't have to be spotless but it does look a lot better kind of wiped down the mixer as well I'll probably give that a really good cleaning here in a little bit and so what we're gonna do when this is done each of these loaves so to speak makes nine rolls and since we're doing two of those we're gonna take this out we're gonna cut it in half we're gonna take half of it and put that in the bowl because that's going to be our second deal. So from that we need nine rolls. So I'll take it, cut it into thirds, and then each of those I'll cut into thirds. And when I get my second round of thirds, as it were, um, that's where we'll be making the rolls. So get one of my big knives out and get that set up. I'll probably take one of these and set it over here. I may try and take that camera and bring it down so I can, uh, you guys can get a better look at how things are going. Like I said, you know, with bread, it's kind of like where we're at. It's like, it's hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. You have a quarter cup of water in there with the yeast and the sugar, and you wait five minutes. And then you gotta go and make the dough, and then you gotta wait for an hour. Cover it up, you gotta wait 10 minutes. So. This is actually one of the more fun recipes for waiting a few minutes because when you go in the oven, and no, I won't show this. Before you put this in the oven, you have to spray it just like we did the other one. Spray with basically a squirt bottle with water in it. And then you put it in the oven and after three minutes, yep, only three minutes, you have to pull it back out, spray it again, put it in for another three minutes. After that second round of spray, because you spray it once before it goes in the oven and twice after, after that it finishes baking out. And actually that, that spraying actually keeps it from burning the top, which is really kind of nice. Usually it comes out looking very golden. Um, I kind of like rolls crunchy uh, a little bit on the outside. I like French bread, um, but we're not here to make croutons, right? So... Got about six minutes left. Um, I believe what I'm going to do um, after this, I know I haven't been doing these on a, on a regular basis, just kind of like when my schedule uh, calls for it. Uh, I'm going to go and probably in a, oh, either this weekend or early next week, uh, I'll get some salmon out and I'll get a couple of these rolls and show you just how easy 
out of the freezer in the in the microwave but i'll do my lemon pepper salmon with the uh, uh with the doTERRA lemon oil because that's really good i i haven't had that in a while so we're looking at about five minutes so um i'm gonna go ahead and take this off anyway I won't let it rest the whole 10 minutes because we'll be sitting here looking at each other. Well, okay, you'll be looking at me. I can't look at you, but be looking at each other all bored and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. And take our time at it. In there. That is about half of one of these. And I'm going to take this and bring it down here. And that way you can go back to seeing. There, that way you get to see what I'm doing here. Okay. So I've got this and it's half, right? So I need to take this and cut it into thirds. So what's the best way to do that? We're going to do wedges. And I'm cutting all the way through. I'm just kind of like, I'm eyeballing it a little bit. Okay, so there's one. Okay, so there's a third. And the other one here, yeah, one about there. All right, so each of these is going to be three rolls. So we're going to take two of these and set them off over here. Remember, keep the counters clean, right? I'm going to take this and a little bit difficult to make thirds out of this. So I'm going to take this and do kind of like what you've seen me do before when we're making French bread is I'm going to roll this out. So this is a whole lot easier to make into thirds, right? I'm going to take one here and no, you're not going to get these absolutely positively even. Actually, one of these you want a little bit bigger than the other two, not a lot. Okay, so you actually have two different shapes that you want for these, okay? And the first one is going to be just a round roll and that's going to be your center okay so you can take that you just want a nice doughy little round roll it doesn't look not that hard right i'm going to take that and set that right here in the center that's going to be my middle okay and then for each of these Here's what you want to do. Hey, Vanessa. So what you want to do is you want to cup your hands. See how I'm hooking my thumbs across. I'm kind of bringing my fingers back over the top. So I've got my hands in a cup. So what I'm doing with this is I'm actually making this as a crescent. And see when you when you pull your hands away. And yes, you want to pinch those, pinch those little there. So when you pull that away, if you see that. See if I can tip it up without spilling stuff. So now when you see that, it looks a little bit like the petal of the flower. And that is the goal. So for each of these, you take this. You're just going to take these and tuck them in here. And you don't have to pound it together. You just, you want to join them. And so that one's going to go right there. And so now, I only have seven more to go. I'm done with the first one. So I'm going to take that, cut my hands together. See, it actually works better when you do cup your, put your thumbs together. And that's perfect. Right there. I'm going to take that. I'm going to tuck it in right next to the other one. So now I've got three more to go. Okay. Here we go. I would rather have this be a little bit longer, um, 
than to have part of this bunched up on one side as opposed to the other. Okay, so I can take this, I can go, okay, it's a little bit, not quite a third across, but then again, this is more narrow on the one side. And then we're gonna take this, and all of these, and then all the ones from this, they're all gonna be that same crescent shape. Cup. <laughs> Don't let your thing go falling down to the floor, right? All right, there you go. Right there. You going to bed, hon? Okay. Carlos who go night night. And that still is a little bit off, so I'm gonna swipe a little bit from that, tuck it in here. It's the nice part about it. Is it? Oh. See it's finally sat ten minutes. There we go. Yeah, there's some instructions that you can cheat on. Not a lot, but some. And now we're gonna take that cup. All right, and I'm gonna take that and tuck it over here and pat that down. Now I've got my last one that I need three. Need three rolls on this. Okay. I was just looking during our break out online because I was looking for one of my old kitchen heroes, a guy by the name of Graham Kerr. When I was a kid, he had a TV show called The Galloping Gourmet. And I think Graham may have finally retired. I didn't see, couldn't find anything on a current website for him. So we got our last three here. I might swipe a little bit from there, stick it in here. Hook. See, you don't have to have that tapered too far on the one side. You kind of want it even. There. Put that up in there. And two more. There. That was a really nice one. Right there. It's starting to sound like Bob Ross. We'll just make a nice happy flower over here. And it's the last one. This one's actually a little bit smaller. I don't mind. Because it's not, it not about perfection. It is about art. Hey, buddy. Okay. So now, I'm going to pinch this last little roll right there. And you can see, this is now... A nice little star. Um, they're going to have to rise some more um, after I make the other one. Um, let's see, where is that in here? Uh, Etoile, which is Daisy. Um, divided into 18 equal portions. Did that, actually did that for the first half. And did all, the, well, we will be doing all the rolls. Um, Got to let it rise again until it's puffy, but not quite double, which is 15 to 20 minutes. So I usually go closer to the 20 and then we get to do the baking directions so the next time i come back we'll be seeing finished product um, but um, when you go to let those rise don't again don't put um, more press and seal on it just cover them with a clean towel um, and um, before you put them in the oven you spray them with water and then put them in the oven oh by the way the oven should be at 425 and so they get sprayed go in the oven ovens at 425 pull them out in three minutes spray them again put them in they go in for three minutes you pull them out you spray them a second time after they've been in the oven put them back in and the total baking time is about 25 to 30 minutes so subtract from that um, six minutes so it's going to be after they go in from the second spraying it's going to be 
uh, 19 to um, 2021, 20, 19, between 19 and 21 and a half minutes. So um, that's how long they're in. And then when you pull them out, they just go straight on the baker's rack and they're good to go. So um, I'm gonna go finish making rolls and go set these up. And hopefully we'll be back in about another hour or so total. And you'll get to see what these things, things look like um, pulling out of the uh, stove. Anyway, take care, God bless. Hey gang, we're back and we are done this stuff is ready to come out of the oven i just heard the dinger go off so let's take a look oh yes oh yes indeed it is just perfect we look at that and they slide right off thanks to our friendly neighborhood cornmeal and here's the other one yes i heard you going off and turn that off stop clear and by the way i had it wrong um the um, oven setting for those is supposed to be 450 not 425 cancel then turn it off and i'm going to turn this around or bring it down here and that way you can get a real good look at these and if you're going to take these to a friends or family to eat take them just like this let them go out um, people will be amazed they'll go oh this is so cool um, I have one lady tell me that looks too pretty to eat um, and then I ripped one off and I said here go have one um, if you're making making them for yourself and yes they're gonna be really hot um, yeah that's warm um, go ahead and take them apart because I don't care that they're all separate and stuff. But I'm going to take them and put them in one of these. And then that's going to go in the freezer. So I have one to keep, one to give away. Anyway, that is all I have for this evening. And I have a little doggy barking for some dumb reason. So I'm going to go take care of that. Anyway, God bless. Have a good evening. We'll catch you again soon. Bye.